This episode is sponsored by Audible. Get a free audiobook of your choice that you get to keep with their free trial. You can learn more at lutherancartographer.com slash audible. The Lutheran Cartographer, episode 73. Welcome to the Lutheran Cartographer, the podcast where we explore what it's like to be Lutheran in different places. I'm your host, Nicholas Weber. Thanks for your patience with the lateness of this episode and the lack of episode last week. I've been off on some adventures that I will be sharing about soon. But this week, we're going to Tennessee to talk to Pastor Eric Phillips of Concordia Lutheran Church. He has a PhD in early Christian studies and joins us today. Pastor Phillips, welcome to the show. Thank you. Help orient us geographically. Most people know where Tennessee is. Where is Nashville? Nashville is in the middle of the state. It's a long state east to west, um, probably like nine hours to drive through. As I discovered once when I was driving from Pennsylvania to Laredo, Texas, and I went through the whole thing. (laughs) Um, back in my uh, grad school days, I, I suppose because it's in the middle, it's it's also the capital of Tennessee. Uh, the Tennessee flag has three stars on it, and I'm told that the three stars stand for the three sections of Tennessee, uh, West Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and East Tennessee, one star for each. And rather different culturally, actually, um, like East Tennessee is Appalachia, definitely different in um, in a lot of its cultural background than Nashville or Memphis, which is West Tennessee. Yeah, actually, like a lot of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina was actually on the side of the North during the Civil War. Kill people who were independent and and were going to pull for the whatever central authority was farther away, basically. It's in the middle of the state and very long state. So it's three hours to Memphis and it's two, two to two and a half hours to Chattanooga, I guess, on the other side. And then if you go north or south, you can actually be out of Tennessee pretty fast because the state's not very wide. So if I go north for an hour, I'll be in Kentucky. If I go south a little bit more than an hour, I'll be in Alabama. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you came to Nashville. Well, I uh, was born in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So I never actually, never really envisioned myself living in the south. I was definitely a Yankee. But when I was in um, seminary, you know, I, I came to the point where I was going to have a vicarage assignment. And then uh, because I did, I did seminary, I did all my coursework um, before vicarage, like I crammed my coursework into two years and then I went in vicarage. And so I was actually done with coursework. So I was filling out paperwork for vicarage and my first placement at the same time. And uh, so it's pretty much identical paperwork since I hadn't had any experiences in between. And on both of them, you know, I said like, Southern District, Mid-South District, and Southern District, you know, I, I gave it my lowest favorability rating. Like, I, I didn't want to go there. I, you know, I thought that was, that was outside of my experience and um, wouldn't be a good fit. Uh, but then, uh, despite that, I got my vicarage in North Carolina in the city of Greensboro, so Ebenezer Lutheran Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. And it didn't take me long to figure out that that was actually great um, to be in a city in the South, at least. Uh, because, you know, I'm pretty urban in my in my formation, I suppose, since I was at grad school in, in Washington, D.C. for, you know, for more than a decade. And, uh, and my wife was also in grad school in Washington, D.C. for the same period of time. And previously she was in college in Houston. And so, you know, we're city people and we, we preferred the idea of a city parish to a country one. And... Um, we discovered in Greensboro that any city of like any reasonable size whatsoever, and it's not that big, but it's in the top 100 in the country, any city has amenities, right? And nice restaurants and um, public services and the kind of things like that, that a city dweller kind of gets used to. But unlike the Northeast, which is where I'd grown up, the state as a whole is actually pretty conservative. So in North Carolina and in Tennessee, both, you know, I'm living in a city but I've got this nice conservative hinterland to sort of exercise an anchor on the crazy liberal impulses of the urban center. And uh, turns out to be a really great combination, actually. And I, I came to really 
appreciate that mix on my vicarage. And so when the possibility of Nashville came up as, as a first call, I was excited by that because it sounded like the same thing, only on a little bit bigger scale. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's go on then and talk about Nashville. What are some of your favorite things about the area? Well, I haven't really done the tourist thing very much myself. Um, it's, uh, it's a big tourist city, but uh, a lot of that has to do with country music. And I've never been a country music fan. You know, it's, uh, I haven't become a country music fan by living in the South. Uh, so, uh, you know, I haven't been to the Johnny Cash Museum or the Country Music Hall of Fame or, um, or even to a honky tonk for that matter. I think, I, you know, I, ha I have young children and so I don't go out at night. You know, it is an exciting city. We get a lot of visitors at the church because, you know, it's, it's a church. Uh, it's the one, it's the Missouri Synod Church that's closest to downtown. And so, uh, you know, we're probably closest to a lot of the hotels that the tourists stay at. And that's neat to see, a, you know, to see a lot of visitors coming through town. And it's neat to be, uh, you know, just to be from a place where I, I say where I'm from and people like in other countries too know, like, oh, I've heard of that. And they might not know why they've heard of that. And um, yeah, actually Nashville is a, is a music center for a lot more than just country nowadays. But it's just sort of a sexy place to be from, you know, even even if I haven't been to a honky tonk. <laughs> Help our listeners out that might not be familiar. What is a honky tonk? Uh, that's the the little bars um, down on Broadway in uh, in Nashville. The, the little bars where they'll have uh, singers, you know, um, they'll have live music and uh because you know nashville is the place to which people have come like for a long time if they want to hit it big in music and especially in country music i was listening to a, a fresh air interview just two nights ago um i heard a little bit of a fresh air interview with shania twain who apparently was canadian like she came from somewhere way up in the frozen north but she came to nashville to try to make it big so you know it's that kind of thing so these honky tonks you have people who are at that stage of their career where they're just sort of taking any gig they can get, I suppose, but they might be the next big thing. You know, you, you might, you might hear Shania Twain at, at a honky tonk, you know, with 16 other people in the room uh, a year before she goes platinum, you know? So I suppose that's a big part of the appeal. And also down in that, in that part of uh, downtown is the original uh, old, uh, old Opry the um the Ryman Theater the Ryman Theater which used to be a church and it's called the Mother Church of Country Music because that's where the Grand Old Opry show used to be used to be filmed for a long time um they have a new uh Grand Old Opry complex out east of town now you know with a big swanky hotel and and all that but um they still have events at the Ryman sometimes and I almost got to be in a beard competition when it was hosted at the Ryman, the American Beard and Mustache Competition. Uh, but it didn't work with my schedule, alas. Fantastic. For those listeners that, well, everyone's listening on audio, so I should mention that Pastor Phillips has a magnificent beard. <laughs> so let's talk about the flip side. What are some of the challenges about being in Nashville? I mean, I don't, I don't really think in balance it's, it's bad at all. I've, I've, I've really, I've really enjoyed being here. I mean, I guess the main challenge is that you're, you're in the South and um, Lutheranism is largely unknown. Like you're, you're, you're really, you're really a minority. The churches that are the established, the established churches where you, where you find, you know, you drive past multiple ones whenever you go anywhere. Uh, are the Methodist Church and uh, and the Church of Christ actually the, the Church of Christ is very big in this part of Tennessee I, I think I think it had its its origins in Tennessee back in the 19th century and um, and Baptists like the uh, the Southern Baptist Convention actually has its headquarters in Nashville and so uh, it's very evangelical and not very Lutheran at all. Uh, but you know, the living, living among evangelicals, like is, is much better than living among <laughs> many groups I could mention, uh, a, a friend, a friend of mine, let's see, a, a friend of mine from the East coast who, who went to the same DC area church with me for a long time. Um, 
visits Nashville frequently and comes to my church and and he said something that I, that I really liked one time. He said, "I really like, I really like Nashville because it's it's a Christian enough city not to be not you know not to be going in a crazy in, in a crazy direction, but it, it's also um, like showbiz enough and secular enough that the Baptists can't outlaw alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the the two the two forces are keeping each other in check pretty well." And, and, you know, as, as Nashville goes, or as Tennessee goes, that is Nashville is kind of like the crazy liberal part of, of uh, Tennessee, like our, our, our national or our, our local government, you know, our city council and our mayoral races and all that, um, by some strange quirk of local politics, uh, people are not allowed to run by party. So like when you look at the when you look at the list of candidates, it doesn't say Republican or Democrat for anybody. Um, but you just sort of assume that anybody who has a chance of winning is a Democrat. <laughs> That's what Nashville is like. You know, Nashville is pretty solidly blue and and Memphis is probably in that direction also. But the state as a whole is definitely red. I don't really have any complaints. I didn't grow up Lutheran myself, and so not being surrounded by Lutheran culture doesn't make me like that's not a strange experience for me that makes sense what about the cost of living in nashville i've heard that things have increased significantly over the last couple of years is that the case or is that yeah well i mean as, as long as we've been here we've been here for seven years now and uh nashville has been growing lots of people have been moving to nashville the nash the real estate market's been hot we bought our house but five and a half years ago, according to the latest to the latest tax assessment, it has really appreciated a lot in that time. You know, it's like it's it's appreciated seventy or eighty thousand dollars in that time, and I don't know if I should believe that or not. But that's I get you know we we get unsolicited calls from real estate agents saying, "Are you thinking of putting your house on the market?" I understand with the pandemic and people wanting to upsize, this is actually happening all over the place now that it's really a seller's market and and uh, property values are way up, but it's been happening in Nashville for longer than that. So yeah, that, that, could, be, uh, that could be a bar to entry if you wanna get into Davidson County, which is Nashville. If you're willing to be in North Nashville or if you're willing to be a little further out in one of the neighboring counties, not south of Nashville. That's where it's more expensive, Franklin and Brentwood. But uh, there are more reasonable options like uh, Murfreesboro to the to the east is is has been growing by leaps and bounds. Also, I think you know, a lot of a lot of people finding something close to Nashville, but a little bit more affordable. Antioch to the southeast is is also you know, more affordable than Murfreesboro. So there are options if you don't mind doing a commute. Although the nice commute is definitely from the South. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, well, they were working on highways on Highway 65 when we got here. And so it was actually snarled for that reason for a little while, but they finished soon. And um, so, you know, maybe it's just that it had the, had a highway uplift to the, the most recently, but we live in sort of Southeast Nashville. Um, so not the really expensive South part, but but pretty nice. And, uh, I have a, I have a beautiful commute to work. You know, it's, it, I don't get much traffic. Um, but if you're coming in from the East, you know, and anytime I have to go West of Nashville around rush hour, I get stuck in pretty bad traffic, you know, like not as bad as when I was in Washington DC, but certainly the, the worst traffic in the Nashville area. I see. Let's take a moment for a word from our sponsor. Folks, if you like podcasts, you will enjoy Audible. It's a service that gives you a audiobook to listen to each month of your choice from a large library. And they want to get you started with a free trial offer that includes an audiobook that you get to keep. So go to lutherancartographer.com slash audible to get your free audiobook and start your free trial today. If you're not sure what book to check out, I recommend taking a look at Pastor Jonathan Fisk's Broken, Seven Christian Rules That Every Christian Should Break As Often As Possible. This was recently released on Audible. Very excited about it. In the book, 
Pastor Fisk goes through the classic pitfalls of moralism, mysticism, and rationalism, as well as several others. Check it out at lutheran slash audible. Let's get back to our guest. Let's go on and talk about what it's like to be Lutheran there. We've touched on it a bit, talking about the all the different non-Lutherans that are very prevalent there and about how Lutheran isn't very well known. Expand a little bo- bit more on what it's like to be Lutheran in the Nashville area. Well, you're like a, like a, a small fraternity, <laughs> you know? Um, I suppose the... The, the area the area churches they don't they don't do as much together as as we, as we probably should the pastors we know each other pretty well like we we have, we have a good circuit the the Nashville circuit is is a really solid circuit i enjoy a lot of the guys in it and we have we have meetings with the middle tennessee circuit which was sort of a, mostly to the east and south of us a little bit so we have joint meetings and the pastors we know each other pretty well but uh and sometimes the congregations do things together but it has to be a little bit more purposeful now than, than it has been. My church, Concordia, is actually the mother church of the Missouri Synod churches in Middle Tennessee, which in most parts of the country would mean it goes back to the 19th century. But in our case, it only goes back to 1929. And that's because the Tennessee Synod was a really conservative and confessional synod for a long time. And so... Uh, Basically, until the early 20th century, uh, the Missouri Synod uh, didn't compete with uh, the Tennessee Synod. And it was, it's really only the traditionally German churches. So like in East Tennessee, where there was some German settlement, like the town of Wartburg <laughs> in East Tennessee and in, and in West Tennessee and Arkansas, you have churches that go back to the 19th century because they were German settlements. But in Middle Tennessee, you don't have any of that. Like we are the oldest Missouri Synod church in middle Tennessee and the other ones came from us like daughter churches or granddaughter churches. And so the old guard sort of when I arrived, like they all knew each other. And, um, and that was sort of like a, uh, you know, back channels grapevine between the the Lutheran churches in Davidson County. But um, that is, that is passing away. And I think we need to be a little bit more proactive about trying to, invite each other to different things that our different churches are doing and see, you know, see that our, that our people get to know each other a little bit as well as the pastors. Lutherans are exotic and strange here. And, um, half the Lutheran churches in the area are ELCA, you know, which is, which is where the Tennessee Senate ended up. Oh, really? Alas. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Tennessee Synod remained aloof from the East coast Lutherans for a long time, but, for a generation after the Civil War, all the Lutherans in America like sort of got interested in the confessions again, and that wooed the Tennessee Senate into joining with, I guess, the LCA or the ULCA, whatever they were at the time. And uh, and then they went south again and took Tennessee Senate with them. Hmm. I see. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about how the interaction with kind of the larger culture uh, the Christian culture of the area goes. You mentioned that L- Lutherans are kind of a fish out of water in terms of how others regard them. And you mentioned that you yourself don't really mind it because you you know how to kind of navigate that. Uh, say a little bit more about that and what that looks like or how that plays out for you or for your parishioners. Yeah. Uh, we have, because Nashville is a place that people move to, um, some of the members we've picked up in the time I've been here have been Lutherans who moved in from another, from another part of the country. And, um, we get, we get some of them, you know, and then there are other, there are five, there are five Missouri Synod churches in Nashville that is in Davidson County, but some, somewhere back around 1980, all of Davidson County became Nashville. So, uh, and, you know, we have, uh, Two of, two of those churches are sort of larger and more contemporary worship style. And so, uh, you know, a, a lot of the Lutherans who move in from other parts of the country go there. And we wouldn't get them at Concordia anyway. <laughs> um, but then, like, the, there are two others that are pretty conservative and, and liturgical in their style. And, um, you know, with, uh, you know, good, 
good uh, solid pastors. And uh, so sometimes, you know, we get, uh, there's, there's competition, I'm saying, for the people who are already Lutheran who moved to town. And I can't really begrudge, um, you know, anybody that I lose to any of the other area churches because, you know, I think, I think we've got some good churches here in Nashville. But uh, a lot of it, you know, a lot of the people that end up coming uh, are not Lutheran to begin with. And that happens most often, uh, most often when you have uh, a couple getting married or a couple that has been married where one of them has a Lutheran background and the other one doesn't. And so like I had, I had two cases last year. Um, I was catechizing two couples uh, that were one of just had been married. One was about to get married. And in both cases, the guy was Lutheran and had been attending my, my congregation previously. And the, and the girl had some other background, uh, Baptist and Methodist and it's the two different cases. And so, you know, I have another situation now where the, where the girl is Lutheran and the guy was Roman Catholic, um, which they didn't actually grow up around here, but um, we do have some pretty firm Roman Catholics in town. Um, like there's not a large group of them, but they are pretty uh, conservative, the Nashville Roman Catholics um, by and large. And, um, you know, then another, another situation two other situations actually where I'm going to be catechizing people who did not grow up Lutheran. And I really enjoy doing that. Um, I've, I've had a lot of chances to do that here. And I guess it's one of the things I like about being a pastor sort of out on the outposts. Um, since I came, since I came to Lutheranism from a similar background and I can walk them through it, you know, I can walk them through what the differences are and explain from a personal angle why this is better. <laughs> and, you know, it's been, I, I've had, I've had, a lot of success at that so far. And, uh, you know, when, when I'm around, when I'm around town, uh, wearing the collar, of course, as, as most places, people assume I'm Roman Catholic, but when I have a conversation, then, you know, I get a chance to tell them something about Lutherans. Good deal. Let's go on and talk about what it's like to raise a family in that, in the area. We homeschool. And so I, I don't have like, personal reflections too many personal reflections on the schools in the area uh when we were when we were house hunting and looking at like the ratings of the schools in the various areas the whole area got good ratings for its elementary schools um but then when you got to middle school and high school the ratings started tanking um the uh, uh for, for middle school and high school like the, uh, the the public schools that get the good ratings are mostly south you know south of town um, where all the expensive property is, which is just probably a pattern that you see in a lot of parts of the country, I would assume. Um, but you know, there are some Christian private schools too. Like there's a, there's a Christian classical school, um, up in North Nashville, Madison way, the, the pastor of, uh, Ascension in Madison sends his kids there. And, um, there's uh, actually two classical schools, I think, down in Franklin, Christian classical schools, and there's one out in Murfreesboro. And then there are also a number of uh, uh, more traditional Christian academies in the area. Although I would expect there to be more. Um, so there are there are options for that. And there's also a lot of homeschoolers. Like there's, there's a lot of groups of the classical conversations uh, co-op in the area which is which is what we do it's a it's a pretty peaceful place i mean we, we did have a bomb go off downtown on christmas morning but that doesn't usually happen <laughs> like that that was a that was a very weird situation we didn't have internet or phone for like christmas afternoon or a couple of days thereafter but yeah crime crime rates are, are not bad and um we don't have a lot in the way of civil unrest even this last year we had a little bit um some some protesters briefly set fire to the courthouse downtown. Um, but that was, you know, the kind of thing that everybody was su surprised would happen in Nashville. So it, it seems like a good, it seems like a good, relatively safe and sane place to raise a family. Although I'm sure the Davidson County public schools are problematic in multiple ways. And that's why I'm not sending my kids there. You know, that they're probably becoming very woke nowadays. Yeah. 
So it sounds like homeschooling is a well-supported option then? Uh, yeah, it seems to be. Like one, one of the classical schools in, in Franklin actually has like a homeschool support component to it. Mm. Like uh, they, have, they have a special program where you can, you can send your kid there who's otherwise homeschooled one day out of the week. And um, you know, they, they do the paperwork for us. They are, they are our umbrella school for interacting with the state as we do our homeschooling. And um, as a result of that, my older daughter can play on their basketball team. Um, which is a really cool perk. So yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's um, better supported than it would be in lots of parts of the country, probably. Although, of course, in your homeschool group, you're going to be the only Lutheran if you're Lutheran. <laughs> that's almost a given. Yeah, that's definitely. I was homeschooled, and that was definitely the case out here in Washington too. Yeah, let's go on and talk about the uh, the Tennessee state government's response and the local response to the coronavirus. Has it been freer like Florida or something more akin to New York or California? Uh, I've been really happy to live in Tennessee with that going on. Um, back uh, in the days of the original lockdown, like – Back in March, or you know, well, mid Lent anyway, mid Lent through mid Easter, 2020, uh, the mayor of Nashville made um, an executive order that no gathering could have more than ten people in it, and so uh, that was that was tricky to work with. Although Concordia is a small church, and so it was easier for us, <laughs> easier for us to work with it, ironically, than some of the larger churches. Um, because once once everybody who who was self quarantining, who was self secluding, had made that decision for themselves. Once everybody was taken out, we had just enough people who actually wanted to come to service that we could do four sort of abbreviated services every Sunday morning, like an an, an hour at a time, four hours in a row, back to back, or I think I think it was an hour and a half back to back for services on Easter Sunday, <laughs> but we were able to do that and you know basically take the pastor and the organist and eight people in the room, and we did that for I don't know ten Sundays or something like that, and then the governor came in and the governor made a uh, executive order that said that uh, city governments and local governments in the state were no longer permitted to make such restrictions on houses of worship. And so, you know, the governor trumped the mayor. And uh, so basically since, since the end of the season of Easter, since about this time last year, we were back to full capacity. And we, uh, you know, we marked off pews and we, you know, so that people wouldn't be sitting so close together. And we, uh, like we stopped kneeling at the altar rail for a little while so we wouldn't have people touching the altar rail in succession after one another and stop passing the offering plate and passing the peace and stuff like that. So we took some precautions, wiped down the chalice with 190 proof alcohol, you know, between tables, that kind of thing, and had no, no interference, you know, from the government at all after that period of the 10 limitation in, in the Davidson County. And, uh, when I looked around at other states and what they were going through, you know, including Kentucky, which was just a little bit to our north, and you think of that as a relatively conservative southern state too, they were dealing with much more intrusive, a much more intrusive governor on that, on that front. And so I felt blessed and pleased to be living in Tennessee last year. Absolutely, yeah. Kentucky was the governor of Kentucky was in the news for his like ticketing people on Easter or something like that? Was that what it was? Yeah, uh, like some the police were ticketing people at a drive-in Easter service, you know, like people who were sitting in their cars. Crazy. Like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. No, it made no sense at all. Well, let's... We were so distancing until you came to my car, officer. <laughs> let's go on and talk about happier things and what you would recommend if a friend was coming into town, they see or do in Nashville, where to eat. What to see and do, I'm, I'm hampered by the fact that I haven't done the tourist thing myself yet. Um, if, if you're coming to Nashville for tourist reasons, you probably have a pretty good idea what you want to do um, on that front. 
as, as far as where to eat, uh, I can be a little bit more help. Um, there's uh, a, a local bit of cuisine is Nashville hot chicken, which is, uh, I mean, similar to Buffalo wings, I guess, in that it's hot chicken. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's a different, it's a different thing. Like it's not, it's not, um, marinated in hot sauce. Uh, what it is, is it's, it's, it's cooked in oil and, um, chili seeds basically. Um, so it's cooked in a hot oil with a lot of chilies in it. And so, um, it doesn't have any red or saucy appearance. You know, it just, it basically looks just like normal breaded chicken until you bite it. <laughs> and then it can be very hot indeed. Uh, and it's good, you know, it's, it, it is, it is really good. And, um, at all the hot chicken places, you know, they have, they have five grades of hotness and I have never tried the fifth and I'm never going to, <laughs> um, because the third is quite sufficient. And, uh, so that's something you might want to try when you come to town. Um, there's a lot of good barbecue places in town, uh, not known for its barbecue as much as Memphis, but you know, it's, it's the same state and we have a lot of good barbecue in town. Um, Edley's barbecue and Martin's barbecue and uh, a little local chain called barbecue <laughs> that we have a location of not too far from here. I have a friend who's a missionary to Southeast Asia and every time they're in the country, they have to come to barbecue. <laughs> they say we've been dreaming of this barbecue like for the last two years because you can't get anything like it. Yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, you know, and any any Nashville's got a lot of money with the entertainment industry, um, with all the music business. Although, you know, it's been pretty hard hit with COVID because it is a tourist city. Um, but it's got a lot of money, and so it's got a lot of nice restaurants of all kinds too. You know, you can you can find you can find just about any kind of restaurant here, and a good exemplar of it. Good deal. Now, as we start to close out the podcast, Pastor Phillips, I want to make sure to give you the opportunity to point our listeners where you'd like, your church's website, places to follow you online, where would you like to point our listeners? Uh, we have a YouTube channel, um, which you can find by going to YouTube and just typing Concordia Lutheran Nashville, or probably just Concordia Nashville would be sufficient. And um, the YouTube channel has on it uh, videos of most of the sermons that I've given in, in the seven years that I've been here, because I had a videographer right from the beginning who started doing that, uh, videoing the sermons and putting them online. And um, we have also been live streaming our services, so you can find whole services in the last couple of years of the uh, of the of the YouTube site. And um, there are also some uh, videos of presentations that I've done at, at different conferences or events and. Uh, a couple series of uh, a couple series where I'm talking in a sort of black and white edited. Um, I have a series on the sacraments, and I have a series on, on on why do you go to church? Like, what's what's the purpose of going to church? And uh, these these are uh, series that one of my members, who's a videographer, has has put together. Like, he basically just turned the camera on and asked me some questions, and had me talk for a long time, and then he cut them up and edited them into like five or six episodes and they're very they're very nicely done like very professionally done and uh they've got a lot of uh circulation on on the the lutheran internet but um you can find them on our facebook page that's one of the places where they're housed and uh we also have like a website but the facebook page is really where all the interesting stuff is <laughs> All right, good deal. Dear listener, you can... Oh, sorry, not the Facebook page, the YouTube the YouTube channel. Oh, okay, good deal. Dear listener, you can find links to all that good stuff that Pastor Phillips just mentioned at the show notes page. That'll be at lutherancartographer.com slash 73. Pastor Phillips, thanks you so much again. What are your parting thoughts for our listeners? Our country is going in a direction, I mean, has been for a long time, going in a direction that... Uh, is a little frightening when we when we chart the graph and when we think about uh when we think about the future we've I, I just wrote a newsletter article for this month in my church about the equality act 
that's uh, that's in the Senate now and already having passed the House. Um, equality, of course, for a specific group of people. Um, it, it, it's all about giving uh, all kinds of civil rights protections to people who want to name their own gender and um, to homosexuals. And unlike other legislation of the same kind that's already in place, it expressly says that um, the freedom the Restoration of Religious Freedom Act from 1993, or not, or not 93, yeah, 93, is not going to apply to this. Like it expressly says that, that religious um, exemptions will not be recognized. And um, this is a huge threat. You know, I don't think it's going to pass this time, but the handwriting's on a wall, as they say. If it could get this far, it's, it's something. Um, we're going to have a lot more interference with the church in the next generation than we've had in this generation. And the interference that we saw with COVID-19 is just, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to get, we're going to get a lot more severe, um, social censure and legal censure also, uh, in the near future. And I, and I pray that I'm wrong. I pray that the tide can be turned and I think we should all be praying for that. But even even me in a, in a relatively conservative part of the country, which I'm which I'm happy to be in, um, anyway, if it happens at the national level and it gets into the civil rights code, it's going to be it's going to be enforced everywhere, you know, just like other civil rights legislation famously was in the South. And uh, I think it's a time that we have to uh, we have to remember. Whose, whose citizens we are and where our true citizenship is, that our citizenship is above. And we have to be willing to, uh, to speak the truth in love. And we have to be willing to, uh, to, uh, to disobey um, if there are unjust requirements put on us and, uh, and to find, to figure out what happens when we do. And, uh, I think it's time for us to be praying and it's a time for us to be gathering our strength and um, making sure that we hear the word and that we, uh, that we are well fed and ready for the next thing to happen. Absolutely. Thank you again. God's peace. Thank you, Nicholas. Thanks for listening to The Lutheran Cartographer. For more about the things that we talked about today, check out the show notes page for this episode. That'll be at lutherancartographer.com slash 73. I encourage you to check out that Audible offer. That'll be at lutherancartographer.com slash audible. And until next time, I'm Nicholas Weber. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.